Today we are going to dive into Lightroom. We're going to look at three different ways that you can make your subject pop. Let's just get straight into it. Let's just stop the messing around with this intro. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, of course, is no different. We are going to dive into Lightroom and we are going to take a look at three different ways that you can make your subject pop in Lyrum. Now, when I say subject pop, I always think of a person. I always think of a portrait, but actually that's not always the case. And these are actually techniques that I use for all kinds of different photos because you always have a subject, right? So you always have something you might want to make pop or stand out or draw the viewer's eye. And these are three different techniques that I use regularly to make that happen. Let's dive in. So first up, let's talk about having a subject that is a person. Now here we've got our subject in the photo. I've done a global edit to this. In fact, I'm pretty happy with how this photo looks. But if I wanted to make her stand out a little bit more from the background, there's a few things I could do. The first one we're going to talk about is coming up here to the masking panel and just selecting subject. Now, this allows us to, as you can see, mask out our subject immediately. Lightroom will just detect it, mask it out. You can see it's done a basically perfect job. We can just bring the exposure up a little bit. Maybe we want to bring the clarity up a little bit. And that immediately is going to make her the brightest part of the photo, which helps her to stand out. And we could even go in and actually click these three little dots here. We can go invert mask one, or we can go duplicate and invert mask one. So now we've got everything but her selected, and we might want to bring that exposure down a little bit. And if we were to look at that, if we turn the mask off, that's where we started. This is where we are now. You can see she really is standing out from that background. There's a little bit more separation there than perhaps we had. Now, another thing we could do, we could use this same technique, but instead of using exposure, let's go into that mask one inverted and let's just drop that contrast quite a bit. Now we've got her being much more contrasty than the background, which in turn also helps to actually make her stand out. If we turn these masks off, and then back on, you can see she is now standing out quite nicely from the background. Another way we could achieve a very similar result, if you don't want to brighten your subject, you can just come up here to the masking panel, just click background, and it's going to immediately mask out everything but our subject. And again, we could then bring down the exposure really easily, maybe bring down the contrast, or even bring down the saturation. That's another way to make her stand out quite nicely. If you look at that, if I just turn that mask off and then back on, you can see we've really made her stand out. So that's a few different ways we could make our subject actually stand out against the background and very quickly mask this stuff out. Let's go on to a different photo. I'm going to show you something else that we can do. So something I do a lot on a photo that doesn't have a person as the subject is rather than use the subject mask, I'll actually draw my own mask. So here we've got a camera. I take a lot of pictures of cameras like this. So kind of a nice flat lay kind of design. We've got a bit of visual interest in each corner, the Fujifilm strap there and the camera in the middle. Now, again, I've already edited this photo, but if I was going to make this subject pop out a little bit, I would come over here to the radial gradient and draw that just over the camera. Now, I don't want this to completely cover the camera and I'll show you why. If I was to make this bigger so that it covers the whole camera and then I pop the exposure on, Actually, it's not too bad in this particular one, but a lot of the time you'll get this kind of halo effect around your subject, which we don't want. So let's just get rid of that mask. Let's draw another one. What I'll usually do is actually just draw this and pop it in the middle of the product there so that it extends out to the edges, but it's not encompassing the entire product. Then we wanna just bump the exposure up a little bit. And what this is gonna do is brighten the product from the actual middle here which works really well. You can see immediately if I turn that off and then back on, it's making the world of difference and it really draws the viewer's eye. This is a more subtle way of doing this. It achieves a very similar result in terms of actually making the subject stand out, but it's a bit more subtle in that you wouldn't necessarily be able to identify that's exactly what's happened. It's not specifically making the subject different from the background, but it just draws the viewer's eye to that brighter part of the image which works really well, especially if your subject is not a person. To be honest, almost every photo I'll use something along those lines to just separate my subject from the background a little bit. This is something you need to be a little bit subtle with, and in an ideal world, you don't want it to look like this has happened. You don't want anyone to be able to identify that you've done that. 
because the best result is that it happens and the viewer's eye is naturally drawn to the subject without necessarily realizing why or exactly what you've done there. You want it subtle enough that no one really notices. That way you know you've done a really good job of it. And that, to be honest, goes for a lot of photo editing, at least in my opinion. The, the more it's noticeable, probably means it might have gone a little bit too far in certain situations. Obviously, there's certain stylistic choices that work really well like that, but it's good to try and keep it subtle. Sometimes I love to go too far. I love to go too far a lot of the time, but I'll try and dial it back a little bit. And, you know, I think that comes with time as well. But if you have any tips of your own for any of this kind of stuff or any other ways that you like to separate your subject from the background, I'd love to hear it down in the comments. Of course, there's a list of all the equipment used for these photos, for this video, for everything down in the description as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We've got new tutorials and new videos all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.